God is who he is. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be nothing. Well, now that we done got that out the way, how y'all doing with y'all country ass? <laughs> y'all try to act like this ain't country, but goddamn it, this country up here. Oh, with some gold teeth in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve, show sure here crazy. There's some real players in Philly, though. I love y'all. I love coming to Philadelphia, boy. Y'all ass, y'all dress up in Philadelphia. You spend your last on the goddamn outfit up here. Oh, uh, it's some layaway in here. <laughs> oh, don't act like it ain't. I know layaway when I see it. You ever had some shit in layaway so long? When they go get it, you don't even recognize it. <laughs> A lot of y'all ain't laughing right now, but goddammit, I'm funny. I'm going to have your ass vomiting in a minute. You just hold on. I tell you right now, you ain't going to sit out here and half-ass laugh at me. I know what the hell I'm doing. Shit, y'all the one bought the ticket. <laughs> No, oh, y'all shaw, front row shaw. What's up, player? Ain't nobody tell you where you was going tonight? Was you dressed for a picnic or something, motherfucker? You know, black people normally get shawed when they go out. What the fuck was you thinking about? It ain't like you ain't got no money. You got on $140 sneakers. Come on, goddammit. Justin decided you just gonna put a t-shirt on and some goddamn jeans and sit your ass on the front row. I'm in the back just pressing out a suit trying to look sharp. You bought your country ass in here with a goddamn, like your ass is 14. This old ass man sitting up here dressed like a goddamn third grader. What kind of shit is this? I ought to slap this shit out you. Believe this shit. Come all the way to Philadelphia looking at your half dress ass. I don't believe you've done that shit. Just lean your, lean your mother, lean, lean the fuck out. I slapped the mother. <laughs> shit, I make people come with it, man. I'm glad I'm here, man. Philadelphia, the home of the 76ers. Allen Iverson. Oh, y'all, y'all had a badass basketball team this year. That goddamn Allen Iverson, if I could do anything that fast, just anything. I'd never tell another damn joke. I'd just be walking down the street. I'd be just showing my cross over to people. What, what? Congratulations on y'all football team and everything. Oh, ain't no need of booing they ass. They yours. You can boo all you want. You ain't getting another goddamn team. Might well go on start liking them Eagles. They ain't bad, though. I like them. I don't watch that much football no more, though, because I quit watching it because, you know, they start throwing penalty flags if you celebrate in the end zone. That's why I quit watching. I don't know if you done thought about that or not, but that, to me, is just a racist penalty. That penalty flag is designed specifically for us. They ain't throwing that flag on white folks. We the only one act a goddamn fool when we scold. White folks scold, you ain't got to ever worry about they ass showing off. White people don't know what to do when they scold. They just... Nice job, Tom. Hey, high five. We the only one out in the end zone with all this shit. And I think it's wrong of you to throw a flag because we happen to be creative. We ain't got much of nothing in this world. We score a touchdown, we can't even clown because your ass is racist and want to throw a flag. I'm telling you, if a brother's creative, you ought to just let his ass be creative. That's a pretty big deal to score a damn touchdown. Y'all don't get a lot of them here in Philadelphia, but it's a beautiful thing to score a touchdown. <laughs> I tell you something else too. 
you're lucky my ass ain't in the NFL because you damn sure had to throw a flag on me because ain't no telling what I do. I scope on national TV with my people watching. Ain't no telling what I do. I probably, I, I, I just shit on the field. <laughs> just pull my pants down and just shit. Get up and wipe my ass with my helmet. <laughs> I know some of y'all tripping right now. How many of y'all this your first time seeing me live? Clap if this your first time seeing me. Yeah, see. I know right now it's a little adjustment you got to make. This definitely ain't Mr. Hightower. Oh, no. Of course, I don't do no cussing on TV because they pay me a lot of money and ask me not to. Y'all ain't paying that much damn money tonight, so I'm going to be a little cussing this evening. I always let a white dude in with a camera. Put your ass over there somewhere and sit down before you fuck around block one of these black people view. <laughs> get that whole camera packed up in your ass. That's where you better get in front of them white people. That's where you better get. <laughs> Fuck around, fuck, you fuck around, jump in front of this big son bitch one more time, see what happens. <laughs> I know it's the truth when people see me live for the first time. Cause a lot of people, what I done found is, a lot of people have me, who cut this goddamn smoke on? You know, save all them effects for somebody else. I don't need all that shit. Got enough smoke up here now, we could cure ham in this motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck that, that shit was funny to me. Y'all kiss my ass. <laughs> Try to act like your country ass don't know what smoking a ham is. You can kiss my ass. Much bad ass meat we done bought. A lot of people I done found, man, have misconceptions about celebrities and athletes. I'm, I'm gonna clear something up. For those of you that, that ever wondered about this, I'm, I'm gonna share something with you. Let me give you some real advice from me. When you walk up to an athlete or a celebrity, listen to me. Don't walk up to their ass treating them like they God Almighty. Cause they ain't. They ass is regular just like you. They just happen to do something else for a living that you don't do. You running up to them, treating them like they the Lord Almighty. Then you find out whether you meet them, the son bitch is an asshole. Now you mad. Now he done told your baby he ain't signing no autograph. Now you looking at his ass like you want to stab his ass. I know your ass ain't trying to give my baby no autograph, you motherfucker. I bet I don't watch a punk ass show no more. But see, if you didn't set yourself up for that, you wouldn't have to take that fall. Because you got to understand something. We regular people just like you. Don't make no big deal out of it. We all the same. Only difference between me and you is, I'm on TV, your ass ain't. <laughs> Other than that, y'all, we the same. You got problems, I got problems. You got bills, I got bills. Bill collector call your house, damn it, bill collector call my house. Oh, he might want a little bit more, but God damn it, the call is the same. <laughs> and you think because I make some good money that I don't feel the same way about my money that you feel about your money? You damn right. Them people, Bill Clark, talking about no, but we, you're not sending in a payment. You know they ask you that shit all the time. I feel the same way about my money you feel about yours. You damn right I got it. I just ain't sending it in. A lot of y'all let bill collectors upset your whole life. Some of y'all done rearrange your life cause bill collectors call your house. Some of y'all done went so far, you done got caller ID. I wish I would hook a box up to my phone where I'm making the rent payment at cause I'm scared to answer my phone. Shit, I, this all the caller ID I need right here. Hello? Uh, this is Visa. Steve Harvey in? He ain't here. 
You ID yourself, I hang the fuck up. I ain't putting myself under no pressure about your, it ain't your money no damn way. You looked at my credit report when you sent me that goddamn refrigerator. That's your damn fault. You know I ain't paid nobody in seven motherfucking years. I bet I don't start today with your monkey ass. I got the refrigerator plugged up and the goddamn door is locked. You bring your punk ass up in here if you want to. I bet you'll leave out of here with everything but a motherfucking refrigerator. We can see this when somebody try to come take some shit back from us. See, and then another thing, I'm, here's another piece of advice. This is for ladies, because I run into this sometimes. I see it happen to athletes a lot of time too. Ladies, let me, let me tell you something. When you with your man and you meet an athlete or a celebrity, remember one thing. You came here with your man. You ought to stand right there beside your man. Don't go running your ass up to that motherfucker. You fuck around, need a ride to the house. I ain't lying to shit. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about stuff that happened to me. This happened to me. My wife, my wife pulled this same shit on me. We at the Image Awards, NAACP Image Awards. Her ass saw Michael Jordan. Ooh, 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 ooh Michael Jordan. Motherfucker, Ann. Why they give a shit about no Michael Jordan? Come talking about I'm gonna run over there and get his autograph. You ain't running no goddamn well. I trip your motherfucking ass. <laughs> Where Michael at now? Sitting up here putting her ass in nice cars, buying her furs and shit. You ain't running up to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan ain't chipping in on the rent or none of that shit. About to give a damn about no Michael Jordan. And that's the other thing, too, it'd be tripping me out. People think that you, when you start making it, you come up. And a lot of y'all in this room that come up, you ain't got to be on TV or athlete to beat and come up. If your ass started here and your ass didn't got to here, then your ass didn't come up, too. That's all coming up is. Everybody in here done come up. You know, when you come up, people think you're supposed to act different about your stuff. You think I feel different about getting something new than you feel about it? No, no. I feel just like you. I'll give you a prime example. I think everybody in this room been gone through the raggedy car stage. I said, everybody in this room been gone through the raggedy car stage. <laughs> I see what's happening. Some of y'all ain't clapping because that motherfucker out in the parking lot. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something, y'all. If you still driving a ragged ass ride, just hang in there because the new car coming. But see, it's a process. You got to go through the raggedy car stage in order to appreciate the brand new car. So just hang in there, y'all, because the new car is coming. But see, you got to drive a ragged ass ride in order to appreciate it. And you think, I don't appreciate a new car just like you appreciate a new car? What's the first thing you do when you buy a brand new car and pull up in the parking lot for the first time and get out? After you shut the door, what's the first thing you do? around to see who saw you get out of it. You know why? Because that new car means something to you. But you know why it means something to you? Because you've been driving a raggedy car for a long ass time. A lot of y'all can come with me on this one right here. A lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. You can sit out there and act like you don't know what I'm talking about, but I bet I get your ass on one of these. How many of y'all had that car that was so raggedy, you know, the one that when you cut it off, the motherfucker don't cut off. <laughs> it's in the parking lot having a seizure. 
You try to walk away from it, act like it ain't yours. Somebody always stop you right before you get in the parking lot. Hey, player, player, you left your car running over there. Oh, no, man, the motherfucker's off. Oh, no, dog, your shit is still running. I said the motherfucker's off. Oh, no, dog, God damn it, it's off. I had a car so raggedy one time. <laughs> I'm driving down the street. It's dark outside. Police officer just gonna pull me over. Woo! I pull over, it's dark outside. He come up to the side of the ride. So you know, I know the deal. I got my hands on the wheel, 10 and two. He come up to the side of the car, I say, oh, What's the problem, officer? He said, I'm pulling you over because the tent on your window ain't legal. I said, excuse me? He said, I'm pulling you over because the tent on your window ain't legal. I said, motherfucker, that ain't tent. That's a hefty bag. You see all that duct tape around that son of a bitch? Now why would I duct tape up a goddamn window? And get your nightstick away from it before you fuck around and punch a hole in it. I fuck around freeze to death in this motherfucker. Let me tell y'all what's happening tonight. I'm your host tonight, my name is Steve Harvey. If you don't know that, I don't know where the hell you been. I would like to thank y'all on behalf of me and Sad the Entertainer for watching the Steve Harvey Show, making it the number one show on the WB. Also for making it the number one watch show in African American households. Right on, right on. But now I'm gonna tell you something about what you came to see tonight in case you didn't know. A lot of y'all was here last year, came out and supported us. But let me tell you something. The Kings of Comedy Tour is the number one grossing comedy tour ever in the history of comedy. Ever, of all time. That's everybody that they never told jokes, ain't never sold these many tickets to see them. Now, I'm telling you that because you ain't gonna be able to read about that nowhere because they don't write that about us. But if we was Tim Allen or Jerry Seinfeld and we had sold these many tickets, we'd be on the cover of Time Magazine. But that's all right, because we do understand, because we wear the same skin your ass wear. So we've been fucked around just like you've been fucked around, but it's all right. We're going to get ours anyhow. You can't stop us. We coming anyhow. You can't stop us. <laughs> Goddamn, you can't stop us. <laughs> 